What's up troops, it's me the Tactical Brit, and I've got a brand new video today featuring probably, in my opinion, one of the best guns in the game at the moment in Battlefield 5 that I wanted to bring to you guys today and discuss how to play with this weapon and how you guys can really maximize your potential on the battlefield using the M1A1 Carbine, which is of course a fan favorite World War II weapon that features in Battlefield 5. Now, this is the deluxe edition release of PlayStation 4 today, and literally the first thing I did was just grind through everything. Of course, I've got my Road to Max rank series coming on a separate account uh, that I'll be using entirely for that series so the XP doesn't compromise anything when I'm recording. And I just randomly decided to pick up the M1A1, presuming it would be a half-decent weapon at best. And even without any specializations which I've now added, this thing is an absolute monster. It really counts when you get the extended magazine, which is something that is vital to it. I really highly recommend if you're going to use this gun, you instantly go and get that 31 bullet magazine, which makes it significantly more powerful and useful at close, medium and far ranges, and slap a medium scope on it. Now, the M1A1 seems a little bit confusing at first for a few reasons and you really have to grind through it in order to maximize the potential that you're getting. So the first problem the M1A1 has is the muzzle flash. If you end up using an iron sight, you're going to go completely sideways with this weapon. You can't spam this weapon because the muzzle flash kicks up so brightly that if you're using the iron sight, you can't see a thing. But if you use a reflex sight, aperture, or medium scope, you're going to have a hell of a time. The medium scope, especially in my opinion, uh, makes this a universal weapon. Of course, it does make things a little bit more tricky at close ranges, but in actuality, the long range and medium range benefits of using the M1A1 a1 with a medium scope far outweigh anything else and I think you can see in some of the footage today I don't even struggle too much at close range it just means you know accounting for the fact that I have got a medium scope here and there and maybe even sometimes crouching and hip firing when I panic and that, that's a totally fine and viable tactic to use as well. So of course, you desperately want to get that extended magazine, and you desperately want to sight on this gun. But what can it offer you, and why exactly is this gun so good? Well, damage output isn't special. Um, the damage is quite low, but the ability to tap fire this gun and do it fast, and do it without really any recoil bothering you, or any accuracy penalties, is insane. You can literally get somebody from like 100 meters away in about three or four bullets and if you start farming in headshots like you'll see a lot of today in the clips that I'm using here it really just comes into its own as one of the best weapons in the game even at close ranges machine guns and SMGs will struggle to outfire you if you have a good enough trigger finger and that is entirely the crux of this weapon as a whole if you don't have a good trigger finger you will not do well if you do and you have a trigger finger like me which is insanely fast you will have a ball of a time with the M1A1 carbine. And it's no surprise really that in the footage that you're seeing today, once you really get the mastery behind the recoil compensation and how to control the gun and how to pace your shots, and even if you don't have to pace your shots in most examples, you can really start farming in the headshots for fun. This gun becomes one of the highest damage output weapons you can think of, and I genuinely believe at the moment it might be the best weapon in the game. Maybe bar the last assault weapon, which is also a really good semi-auto spam cannon. So how exactly should you seek to use the M1A1 carbine? And the answer to that is using it at medium range, and that sounds fairly intuitive for a rifle that is, you know, a semi-automatic rifle, as you'd expect with perhaps the Gewehr 43. But in actuality, it's very different. Other medium range rifles prevent you from having a run and gun experience, and what makes this really interesting is that the M1A1 almost should be played as though you're using an SMG, but at medium range. And I know that sounds very odd and quite frankly confusing, but you need to understand how this operates. So the M1A1 is capable of giving you really high damage outputs at close range, and that means that you can move position to position without worrying about who's gonna pop up in front of you. If you're using the Gewehr 43, that simply isn't an option and you have to move slowly and methodically because the damage output of the weapon is super slow. And if you get into two close quarters with any given player, you'll probably get punished for it. You strictly have to stay at medium range with that gun and strictly have to choose how you move across the map in order to counter the fact that it doesn't really have the ability to be a close range weapon. But with the M1A1, that's simply not the case. You can run around using it as like it's a stem and it will be perfectly fine. But when it really comes into its own is in and around the 20 to 30 meter range, and you can even go in excess of that. I think, you know, 50 meters is a fair give for this weapon. You can definitely outsnipe snipers in some examples, but the best damage output I've seen and the best ability to use this gun is to get in and around the 20 to 30 meter sweet spot, in and around 40, 
and you can just absolutely spam cannon and farm headshots. Aim for central mass, and if you can, if you're close enough, really try and sweep those headshots in, because not only does it reduce the amount of bullets you're firing, which is important, it allows you to have much more kills under your radar, because you'll take care of somebody quickly, quickly shift to the left, take care of another one quickly, quickly shift to the left again and take care of another one quickly. And you'll see in a few of the gameplay instances today, there are times where I will literally headshot somebody, take them out of the flay almost instantaneously, and immediately switch to the person next to them. Purely because that's just the easiest thing to do in the scenario. And not only that, but it just makes life a lot easier. You know, I want to get through players as fast as I humanly can and, you know, take them out as quickly and as unequivocally as humanly possible. So, in effect, we have a medium-range rifle here that works like an SMG that you should kind of use like an SMG, but in actuality plays really well at medium-range. It's probably the weirdest hybrid in the game. It allows you to reverse really well. You don't really have to think too much about what engagement ranges you're getting into because it's quite versatile at all of them. But the only crux to this is simply the trigger finger. If you have a good enough trigger finger, you'll love it. If you don't, you'll probably hate it. So that's about it from me today, troops. I'm going to let the gameplay run on just because it was a pretty good game. This is literally a single game. Like, the, this was one clip from one game, and it was damn good. And I think it really shows what this weapon is capable of doing on the battlefield. And I really think that a lot of people will enjoy it. Let me know any questions you have in the comment section down below. And as always, folks, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon in the next one. Regnerung scharf. Deckung. Wir haben eine Handgranate! 